Hello, this is Dr. Hui Liu from San Jose, California, United States. My email is ibridgepy at gmail.com. iBridgePy is an easy-to-use Python platform to help traders to build algorithm trading robots. It can backtest and live trade with inter interactive brokers, Robinhood, and TD Ameritrade. You can download iBridgePy from www.ibridgepy.com. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel because more tutorials are coming. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to use iBridgePy backtester to backtest a buy low sell high strategy with minimum data. Minimum data here, I mean, I only have daily bars and without minute bar data. The reason for that is daily bar data are easily accessible. For example, you can download it from Yahoo Finance or other data providers. Very likely, they will give you daily bars for free, and it can go back, back to even 20 years. That's a lot of data and good data. However, most of the data providers will not provide minute bar, especially go back to 20 years. They may provide minute bars, but maybe just within half a year, or extremely maybe within the last year. But what if you want to backtest, go back to 20 years, and without minute bar data? That's the problem I'm going to address in this tutorial. The motto of this backtesting strategy is backtest with minimum, minimum data by simulations. So the simulation is the key point in this demo. In this demo, I'm going to talk about start backtest by pick a start day and an end day. That's definitely what you need to backtest. You can go back to 20 years as an example. Then supply historical data from either local file, which means you can download data from third-party data provider and save them from local file, and use the local files to supply historical data to average pad backtester. Or you can supply historical data directly from brokers, for example, interactive brokers. You can just uh, 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 request historical data back to maybe 20 years from interactive broker if they have. Then we need to handle minute bar data. The reason for minute bar data is the transaction happens, especially in the buy low sell high strategy. The real transactions always happen one minute before the market close. And we don't have minimum bar data, so that we must come up a simulation way to simulate the minimum bar data, so that the strategy is to simulate minimum bars by daily bars. Then I will talk about the pros and cons of this backtesting strategy. Also, I will talk about other related tutorials. So the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, give a description about buy low, sell high strategy to the code and give you a real-time demo about backtesting in average pie. So first, I would like to talk about the strategy we are going to backtest. This strategy is called close price reversion. And this one is, this strategy is very simple. The basic idea of this strategy is if yesterday's price is higher than today's close price, which means there is a price drop at the end of today's trading day, today's trading day, and before market close. If there is a price drop from yesterday to today before the market close, then we assume there is a price reversion, which means tomorrow's price will go up. Then at this moment, before the market close, we place 
an order to long the position, which means we want to buy. And in this strategy, we want to buy 100% of the portfolio. If today's price is higher than yesterday's price, which means there's a price drop, then we think it's time to sell off our position portfolio. Because yesterday there's a price jump and we got benefit, then it's time to sell. And this strategy is here. There are two basic functions. One is initialize. In this function, we define shared variables in average type. So we have a variable called context.security to define a security, which is the ticker is SPY, which is an ETF to track SP500 index. We use uh, SPY as a demo. And there's a iBridge path function called schedule function. This function is to in average pair is to schedule other functions to run at specific time. In this example, it takes three variables. The first one is called daily func, daily function actually, and this is a function name. We define daily function name here, which means we want to run this schedule to run this function at some time. And there is a date rule and a time rule. The date rule is what day you want to run this strategy, run, want to run this, this function. The day rule is every day, which means every trading day, because weekend we don't trade. And the time rule defines when in a day you want to execute this function. And we said we want one minute before market close. And this is the time rule. So which means this function will be triggered one minute before market close every trading day, which is 3.59 p.m. Eastern time. Because the US market close at 4 p.m. And we assume the price at this moment will be very close to the real close price. And daily function is the function where the trading decisions are really make. So first, we print out the time when this function is triggered. So we use an average price function called get date time. And then we request historical data. Because we only need a daily bar and we only need yesterday's price. So we call it, we get request historical data of SPY and we want daily data. We want to go back two days. The close price is this. Uh, close, yesterday's close price is this. And today, today's close price, even if the market is not closed, but we assume at this moment, the price is very close to close price already. If close price today greater than yesterday, we want to sell. So we use an average price function called order target percentage. Otherwise, we long this position. And this is the strategy we are going to backtest in average price. Okay, let's switch to test me. .py. Testme.py is the main entrance of backtesting system. In testme.py, the first thing you need to choose is a file name. In this demo, I'm going to talk about the buy low, sell high strategy, which is the file name in my system is this one, demo close price reversion. Also, you need to have account code there because you may need to retrieve historical data from interactive broker server. Then in this demo, I'm going to use local file because it will be faster. 
to load historical data from local file, and I have it in my uh, I have the data in my local folder, which is input. Also, uh, uh, hybrid hybrid type backtester supports to use other data providers. For example, Interactive Brokers, PDA Matrix, Robinhood, also hybrid type data provider we are working on to provide historical data. But in this demo, we'll talk about uh, local file, loading, loading historical data from local file for faster demo. In backtesting, you need to choose two data types. One is start time, the other one is end time, which means the simulation will start from start time to the end time. In the end time, I just choose 2020, December 24th, because I saved historical data on that date. And I use a Python package called data time to define a data time here. However, I replace the second by zero, because the de default mode of average pipe back backtester is designed to simulate minutely. If a second is not zero, then it will cause some problem. That's why I need to replace it by zero. The start time is easier because I can use a function called time delta to go back 50 days from the end date. So like this. To load historical data from local file, what you need is to come up a historical data ingestion plan. You can use this class to create an object called his ingestion plan. And it is a reserved word in average pipe, which is used to store historical data ingestion plan that describes what historical data are needed during backtesting. An average pipe backtester will fetch this data before backtesting to speed up the whole backtesting process. It's not required for backtesting, but it will make backtester much faster. Then we need to define two his 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 injection plan. One is daily data because in our buy low sell high strategy we always need to get the close price of yesterday so that we need to at least have daily bars. To supply historical data from local file, what you need to do is define a security, define bar size, one day means daily bar, and then use a keyword file name to supply a file. And you may ask, there, what's the default folder for this file? Because it's just a file name without a folder name. Actually, the default folder name is iBridgePy input folder. It's right there. And I have this file already saved right there. Let me see date time. This one, 50 days, index of date time. The other data plan I need to have is a minute bar data. The reason I must supply a minute bar data is because in my strategy or any other strategies, the transaction will happen on minute le level so that for a backtester to simulate the transaction price, it needs a, a pro minute bar data to simulate the transaction. For example, in buy low sell high strategy, the transactions happens at 3.59 p.m. Eastern time. So that we must supply the million bar data at least we need the transaction price at 3.59 p.m. to simulate the transaction. And as we explained in the tutorial at the beginning of the tutorial, we don't have million bar data because just we brokers does not have it, for example, back to 20 years, so that 
we have to come up a simulation way. In, the, in this setup, the simulation will be done by daily bar data. Because daily bar data has open, high, low, close price. And the transaction is 3.59 p.m. The price will be very close to the close price. So that in this backtesting setup, we simulate 3.59 p.m. price by the close price of daily bar. So that the way to make it happen is data source name. We say simulated by daily bars. Yeah, that's the setup for this testing. And let's go run a simulation. OK, we got the result. Let's take a look at what's happening there. So we can see data injection started and in ingested histo historical data from this folder and this file. As we expected, it comes in in input folder. And uh, the folder name of average pie in my local is called Yellowstone average pie. And then loaded from this file as we designated here. Then ingested hist. For SPY, bar size is daily bar. Then to verify, we got the correct and correct historical data. We display first line is October 8th. The last line is December 24th. That's why our simulation uh, starts ends at December 24th, because we only have that data. And then this is the strategy file name, account information, and then initialize trader completed. Then, as we talk about in the buy low, high, buy low sell high strategy, the daily function is triggered only at 15.59. And the simulation started from November 4th and the function is triggered at 3.59. Also, you can see there's transaction happens. Here, you can see on November 6th, bought 285 shares of SPY, and the transaction price is this price. This price is not the real minute bar price because we don't have it. And this price, is the close price from daily bar of November 6th. Because we said, we if we don't have minimum bar data, please simulate it using daily bar. And the default way in average pie is the close price of daily bar. Of course, you can set it if you feel open price or high price or low price fit your strategy. I will talk about how to change it later. Then we can see the price and their transaction happens and goes through December 23 and the last transaction. To visualize the backtesting performance, we have a two in twos folder. And we have portfolio sharp ratio dot dy. We use latest backtesting balance log. It means because after we run the simulation, two historical uh, two two logs are created. One of them is called the balance log. You can see in the output folder. Balance log have four columns: date, time, portfolio value, cash value. So that if we plot the account portfolio value then we can visually see the performance of the strategy. The other log is transaction log. It recorded every transaction in the backtesting. You can see bought, sold, bought, sold, exactly as same as what you see in the console there. So with these two logs, we can visualize the backtesting performance. And the tool I'm going to use is called use latest 
back test balance log, which means this one. This is the latest balance log, and you can see it read out from output folder and look for the latest uh, balance log, and then load file, draw a plot. Let's run it. You can see this is the performance looks like this, and the x-axis is the um, the number of simulation date, and the y-axis is our account portfolio. You can see starts from a uh, hundred thousand dollars because that's the default value, uh, starting value in every type back tester, and it started every day. You can see the transaction and then ends there. This is the simulation result using minimum bar, uh, using daily bar to simulate minimum bar date. As a comparison, I want to run another testing, which is this one. It's spot time. Um, we have a details tutorial you can uh, refer to actually is uh, right there. This is the detailed tutorial to talk about backtesting using uh, spot times. However, what I want to explain is here. The ingestion plan is different because I load minute bar data here instead of simulated result. You can compare these two files. You can see here is simulated by daily bar. However, this one is load minute bar data by a local file, which means I have a pretty accurate minute bar price to run this simulation. So which means this simulation is using minute bar and this one is simulated by daily bar. Theoretically, these two simulation result should be pretty close. As a verification, let's run it again. Let's run this one is test spot time. Let's run it. Okay, and let's verify we loaded historical data here. So we loaded daily bar from this file, and the first line, last line is correct. Then we verify we loaded this file, which is 1 minute 40 day, 40 day, and we loaded to minute bar data there. And the first line is here, the last line is here, which means we successfully loaded minute bar data and use minute bar to do simulation. The simulation started as we expected, and let's run the portfolio sharp ratio again. We still use the latest backtest balance log. You can see this is the latest one, and it was created because of spot, spot time simulation. And compare it with the previous one, you will see the result is pretty close actually. Compared to the previous one, you can see the shape is pretty much the same, but the detail structure is a little bit different. The reason for that is the previous one, we use close price to do simulation, to simulate minute bar data, but this one is we use historical data we provided as minute bar data. So that's the reason of difference. And let's switch back to daily bar price. So as I explained, I use the close price of a daily bar to simulate minute bar data here. However, if you want to change to use open price, if it fits your sim strategy, then what you can do is go to config and go to uh, base settings.py. You can see there is a value in project 
there is a value called use column name when simulated by daily bar. And the default value is closed. What if I change it to open? And let's run daily bar simulation again. And uh, the result will be pretty much different, I assume. OK, simulation stop. And uh, let's run the latest performance analysis. Wow, the shape looks pretty much different. You can tell it goes up and goes down compared to the previous one. You can see it pretty much go up. The reason for that is I use the open price to simulate one minute before close, before the market close. And it looks like it's not a good simulation for buy low, sell high strategy. But let's change it back. Okay. I want to mention is for this one, if you here, I still use the default way to create simulation times. Of course, you can change it to use spot time and do the simulated, uh, combine with simulated by daily bars. So that as a demo, we can copy this part and paste it here. And then let's comment out this one and comment out this one. And let's run it again. Oh, PYTC is not defined. Okay, where do I use? Oh, right there. So I need to import PYTC. OK, started and much faster, you can see, because only the, uh, the back tester only used the spot times. If we run this, the performance is exactly the same. After we did a demo, it's time to talk about pros and cons of this setup. The goal of this tutorial is to backtest strategies with minimum data. Minimum means we can easily find daily bars, but not easily find the minute bars. And we want to simulate minute bars by daily bars. The pros of this settings is backtest is enabled when only daily bars are available. So that's a big plus actually. And also minimum bars are simulated by daily bars like use the close price of a daily bar to simulate a minute uh, to simulate the minute bars is that good simulation then the cons uh, of this settings is backtesting accuracy is compromised because we always use the close price of a daily bar to simulate a minute bar so that if your your strategy, especially the transactions, does not happen at the end of a trading day, then the price very likely will be not as same as the close price of the daily bar, so that the accuracy is uh, compromised. How can we improve this situation? So to have a better accuracy, then definitely you need to look for uh, minute bars, minute bar data as much as possible. That's the best way. So if you want to better backtesting, you need more data. That's very clear. We have made a, a few YouTube tutorials related to backtester and how to set up different test me 
file to test different scenario. The first one is how build a uh, buy low sell high strategy was developed using a machine learning skill. So you can refer to this tutorial. Then we have a tutorial detail, detailed explanation about buy low sell high strategy, how it's implemented in average pie. To evaluate the backtester uh, backtesting performance, back uh, the strategy in backtesting performance, uh, we have a discussion about using sharp ratio and analyze sharp ratio to quantify the backtesting performance. And we have tutorials to talk about how to calculate sharp ratios. And then we have the to use the backtester, the easiest setting is without any historical data ingestion. So you can go to this tutorial to learn about that. As an improvement, you can ingest historical data before backtesting starts. So you can go to this tutorial. Then, iBridge Pi Backtester supports to backtest using historical data from any third-party data providers so that you can download data from third-party data providers and save them to local files and then use iBridge Pi to backtest and loading from local files. So you can refer to this tutorial. To improve the backtesting speed, you can just backtest a list of spot times. You can talk about you can uh, refer to this tutorial. Also, you may you may need to convert historical data from one format to another format. Then you can you can refer to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we we'll talk about how to transfer uh, epoch second to date time and vice versa. Thank you very much. For any questions, please send an email to ibridgepi at gmail.com. If you need any help on coding, please check out our well-known render coder service. More tutorials are coming. Please don't forget to subscribe. iBridgePy is an easy-to-use Python platform to backtest and live trading. Thank you very much.